Here's the carnage from yesterday's trip. Looks like we busted a fin rail. I need to re-glue that. Guess I'm gonna rock the plastics today. These are my one of my first pairs of free diving fins ever. Use them at the jetties also. Alright, alright, well we are out here at the oil rigs. Fisher and Hunter are in the water right now and uh, I'm just taking it in, enjoying the flatness of the ocean today. Yesterday, we went really hard. Today, we're doing a nice, easy, chill trip. And we also got a bunch of fish, so we don't really need to fill the boxes. All I'm really doing is just focusing on my diving, relaxing. I noticed the first stop, immediately I just felt super, super calm. A lot more relaxed than yesterday. We do have a lot less current. It's like very stagnant right now. There is a slight push, but as far as relaxing and not having to fight ripping current, everything has been good. Oh my God. Jackerville got him bled, gutted. That thing is gonna taste great, believe it or not.
Well, short-lived offshore trip. Didn't have a whole lot of action, but as I stated, we were really just hanging out and working on the bottom time. We did manage to get that juvenile Jack Corral, which believe it or not, actually tastes super good on par with a lot of great eating fish that I've had before. If you do want to see the catch and cook I did last year on it, I'll leave it tagged up here. Um, I was just as surprised as probably a lot of you guys are. Uh, they do taste a lot different and they have a lot different color and texture of the meat than those giant jacks. So uh, rest assured, it's not uh, what you're thinking. But yeah, we did also get that Spanish macro out a little bit farther in some deeper water. It was murky, um, but we found a bait ball up on the surface and under all of that were Spanish mackerel. Fisher, my dive buddy, actually dove down and shot one before me. And uh, I just dove down blindly after that. And lo and behold, one swam right in my face and I took a shot on it. So yeah, other than that, didn't shoot any more. Didn't pull the trigger at all the rest of the day. We did see that really cool school of giant black drum and redfish, which I was super stoked about because here in Texas, we did have that freeze uh, here fairly recently earlier in the year and uh, lots and lots of redfish drum and just other game fish died. So seeing those big drum out there offshore seeking refuge in that deeper, warmer water is good because they are the breeders and they're crucial in keeping our populations in check. Those things keep the redfish and drum population growing. So good to see. I never really touched uh, those bigger breeding fish or I don't keep them at least. So we just enjoyed the view there. Uh, but like I said, just very, very good to see. Other than the dive trip, which was super cool, we got some good dives and uh, felt a lot better than the first day. I will say that the current calmed down and I was able to get down there and really just chill and look around and uh, I was a lot more relaxed, I guess you can say. So yeah, I wanna take the rest of this video to answer some questions that I've been getting about free diving recently. Um, I've just been getting like the same two questions over and over. And those being uh, how I hold my breath when I go out there diving. Some of you guys are like, how in the world is he holding his breath for, I don't know, longer than 30 seconds when I'm out diving? And then also you guys are asking, how do I handle the pressure down at depth? So uh, if you are familiar with uh, say a deep swimming pool, you know that say past five or six foot, your ears will actually start to hurt. Um, and as a free diver or as a diver in general, uh, we do have to clear our ears. There's two methods of doing this. One is Vasalva, one is Frenzel, which is a little bit more complicated and harder to learn. But to be short and to be simple about it, Vasalva is what scuba divers typically do since they don't really have to worry about oxygen consumption. And all you do is pinch your nose, close your mouth, and blow out your nose. If you do it correctly, you should feel air and this kind of whoosh sound go out your ears and uh, you won't have any more pain when you're going down. So that's the first method to do it. That's a good way to start out if you are getting into diving. But if you are starting to go a little bit deeper as a free diver, you will notice, at least for me, when I'm going straight down perpendicular, I just could not uh, continue to do the Vasalva method to clear my ears. Whatever it was, I just had to have my head up. Uh, as a scuba diver, this doesn't matter since you are descending down like this. Um, but yeah, whenever my head was below everything, I just could not do it, say I think past 30 foot. Also, the other reason that free divers don't do Vasalva is because you are blowing quite a bit more air, using a lot more energy to clear your ears. And once you get down to depth and you're doing longer, deeper dives, Every little bit of oxygen counts. So, so really the best method is the alternative, which is called the Frenzel. And what this is, it sounds kind of weird, but um, instead of blowing out of your nose, using all of that energy to push air out, what you do is kind of close your throat. I can do it naturally now since I've been doing it so long, I don't even think twice about it. Um, but you close your throat and you actually use your tongue somewhat of like a piston to trap the air in the back and you'll actually push it up against the roof of your mouth, forcing air out of your ears. This method is a lot better since I really am not actually blowing any air out. The way you know you're doing it right is whenever you can exhale all of your air, have a completely empty stomach, and still do it. So if you guys are getting into free diving, start with the Fasalva method. Once you start to get more advanced, go deeper and try to dive longer. Uh, look into the frenzel. It took me like half a day to learn it of just sitting down and doing weird things with my tongue and blowing air. But um, 
definitely recommend that method. Also, when you get down to depth, it's a lot easier to do the frenzel than the fasala, as I stated. So, But other than clearing your ears, another thing you might want to consider uh, that I've experienced before and still do on occasion is actually a sinus squeeze. And this is anywhere in your sinus cavity or actually up here. I've experienced this a little bit here and there, just whenever you get stopped up with allergies or something like that. So if you do uh, frequently have uh, like stuffy nose and you know you feel all that pressure in there, take medicine, whatever you take to get it all cleared out and just hope that you won't have any issues offshore. So yeah, that is pretty much the gist of how to handle depth. Uh, or at least the pressure at depth. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is holding your breath. There is some very interesting physiological aspects as mammals um, that we have naturally um, ingrained into us to uh, be able to dive. So what I'm talking about is the mammalian dive reflex and this is a natural thing in all of mammals. The reflex isn't as strong as say it is in polar bears which can hold their breaths for insane amounts of time. But we do have it. It is possible to hold your breath for way longer than you ever imagined. And uh, this is mainly due to three things that are triggered by the reflex, um, which are actually triggered by number one, cooling of the facial area, typically with cold water. And number two, apnea. Any sort of breath holding will uh, begin to trigger the reflex. So as a diver, we can use these both in conjunction, cool the face down with ocean water and just start doing some breath holds on the surface, or as I do, is I just start diving, getting right into it. I find this will trigger the reflex the fastest. But what it is, what the mammalian dive reflex is, is actually a series of three things, bradycardia, splenic contractions, and vasoconstriction. I'm gonna go over this very briefly since I know it's super uh, sciency and detailed. Uh, but what bradycardia is, essentially is the slowing of the heart rate. Your body gets in the water, you're starting to hold your breath, you feel this cold water on your face. So naturally, as a reflex, your body slows that heart rate down so you can hold your breath longer since it knows that you're gonna be at a shortage of oxygen. Second, splenic contractions, basically, I'm not like an expert on it, but I do know that what it is, is our body sending freshly oxygenated blood into the bloodstream. So like I said, we sense that we are in the water and that we're gonna to need to hold our breath. So as a countermeasure of that, our body will just kind of rejuvenate itself with oxygen since we will be at a shortage. And lastly, number three, vasoconstriction. I actually did go over it whenever I originally filmed this video, but I found a slight discrepancy in what I was saying and I wanna get it right. So vasoconstriction actually occurs immediately upon the triggering of the dive response. And what it is, as the name goes, is actually where the blood vessels in our extremities or our limbs constrict. And as a result, we have a restriction of blood flow out to our limbs. So uh, due to that, we'll have a higher concentration of blood in our chest cavity or our thorax. And the reason this happens is because whenever we go down to depth, the air in our lungs will actually compress and having that extra blood in there will fill that void of compressed air. So uh, basically this allows us to go down to depth and prevent our entire chest cavity and our lungs from collapsing from all that pressure. So this extra blood will occupy that space created when our lungs compress going down to depth, preventing uh, too much shrinkage of our lungs on dives. Believe it or not, every atmosphere you go down, which is 33 feet, our lungs will compress a certain amount. As a response, our body will fill that up with blood to prevent it from just getting crushed by the pressure. So definitely need that blood shift. Uh, if we didn't have it, we would not be able to do what we do as divers. And we, we really wouldn't be able to go to depth at all. The other effect that's, I guess, least commonly known about peripheral vasoconstriction is the promotion of anaerobic metabolism in the muscles. And this is where energy is created so we can move despite there being an absence of oxygen uh, when we're holding our breath. So yeah, so those are some of the technical, more physiological aspects of diving uh, that I find really interesting. And I got all of this information from a book that I've read called Longer and Deeper by a guy named Jap Verbos. I might be butchering the name there, but if you guys do want to check out the book and read more into what I'm talking about, I'll leave the link down in the description box below. I've really enjoyed it. It's been a super helpful book. It'll cover all of the physiological aspects to diet, to exercise, all sorts of stuff to help you become a better diver and understand what's going on when you're diving. Yeah, that's a little bit on the natural side of holding our breath, the natural adaptation we have. The second aspect as far as holding our breath uh, that I wanna talk about is something that you can control and that is uh, the way you prepare for a dive, your breathe up and really just your course of action leading up to 
taking that final breath and going down. So to be completely transparent, there is a lot of breathe ups and pre-dive uh, breathing techniques out there on what you can do before you go out and dive. Um, I don't really do any of that, if I'm being completely honest. Um, I find the best method, at least for me, uh, before a dive is to just relax and do nothing on the surface. Lower the breathing, minimize it as much as possible. Uh, because if you're breathing too much on the surface, number one, you're most likely hyperventilating, which is not good. You're putting yourself at risk of a blackout, unexpected blackout, and you don't wanna do that. Um, what I like to do, which makes sense, um, is just minimize my breathing as much as possible almost to the point where I'm about to fall asleep. So if you think about it, if you only have to breathe uh, very little, like taking little inhales and little exhales, you know that your body is not consuming a bunch of oxygen. It means you're completely relaxed, comfortable, calm, and your muscles aren't requiring you to uh, replenish them with new air constantly. So, so on the surface, just sit there. If you're properly weighted, you'll be able to float at the surface without actually having to kick or do anything to stay up, which is exactly what you want. The more calm and relaxed you can get before a dive, the slower you can take your breathing and uh, the lower amount of oxygen your body is gonna need. So what I do is just sit up there and literally just breathe just like normal. Inhale, exhale, just very small breaths. If you're doing any sort of breath that's irregular to your natural uh, pattern of breathing, uh, you're probably hyperventilating. Now, I will say, after you come up from a dive and you're recovering, yes, you can take your deeper breaths, get your body replenished with new air. Uh, but once you do that, give yourself ample amount of time to just calm down and slower the breathing. And whenever it's time to dive, whenever you feel completely relaxed, exhale the air you have, not too much though to stress yourself out, just exhale, and then just take your final breath. So I'm just breathing like normal. I might take one, say half or three quarter breath uh, inhale and then I'll exhale it as much as I can comfortably without you know causing any tension in my stomach or anywhere in my body so I'll go and then I'll take my final breath so and through the stomach first and then once your stomach fills up fill up the rib cage up into your chest. If you do it this way, you know you're not gonna be hyperventilating and you know you'll be completely relaxed. A lot of guys uh, that I've noticed, they'll get up on the surface and they'll just be like <sighs> Or they'll do a common practice where they'll do like a three or four second inhale, followed by an exhale, double the amount of time. And while this can work, um, believe it or not, whenever you inhale, your heart rate is actually gonna spike way up. So I just like to minimize my breathing, minimize those inhales. If you want, you can do slow, uh, like slow, small inhales preceded by long exhales because exhales actually do lower your heart rate. Um, but I find that I'm not as relaxed whenever I'm doing some sort of breathing technique like that uh, as I would be uh, when I'm just breathing normally as if I'm about to fall asleep. Hopefully you guys are getting at what I'm trying to say here. Yeah, that's kind of what I do at the surface pre-dive. Just focus on relaxing, calming yourself as much as possible, and you'll be very surprised at how long you can actually hold your breath. Yeah, with that said, hopefully I filled you guys in on some good information uh, if you've been wondering or interested in this free diving that I do. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you did enjoy the video, found some value out of it, or learned something, please consider dropping a like down below. It really helps the channel out. YouTube will push my videos into the algorithm more so when we got likes on it. And uh, leave me some suggestions, leave me some comments if you have any more about this or anything related to the channel. Just anything you got, drop them down below. With that said, I'm gonna roll. You guys have a good one. I'll catch you guys in the next video.